today we're um, making a tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a mini map. You see this a lot in um, most RTS games, and you even see it sometimes in first person shooter games. It's a very useful trick, and, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So um, I already made the sprites and, and a background just because uh, I don't want to spend time making it, and there's several. So first off, I just had the player sprite, which is a simple 32 by 32 sprite, and I filled it in all black. I have three building sprites, so I just made random stuff. I made them 64 by 64. I made a mini-map sprite, which doesn't really matter how big you make it, as long as it's square. I made mine 128 by 128. And then I got um, the icon sprite, which is the icon I'm going to give the player or the buildings when they're displayed on the mini-map. So if you look at it, I actually have two icons in here. This one I'm going to use for the player, and this one I'm going to use for the buildings. This one I made 8x8. Eight eight. Make sure that they're all centered, except for the mini-map. Okay. Then I made a background, which is 640 by 640 and it's a gradient, just like the mini-map. Alright, so now let's get into the objects. First off, let's create the OBJ player object. Give it the sprite. Let's go into the step event and put in the basic four-way movement. All right, so that's done. Now let's create the mini-map object. So create object called OBJ mini-map. So in the mini-map, go to, to the creation event. And in the creation event, we're just going to make one variable, call it C. This is going to be the um, the proportion of the mini-map to the room. So I'm going to make it 0.1. That means that we're going to make the mini-map one-tenth the size of the actual room. Now go into the draw event. Now, if you remember correctly, I made I made the sprite a square, and I'm going to make this the room a rectangle. So how are you going to fix that? Well, I'll show you. So... Go make function draw sprite ext. This means this is draw sprite. It's a very simple one. You can only go and use a few things with it, but with the ext or extension, you can do a lot more stuff with it. So sprite, just sprite index. Then comes subimage, which we're just gonna make image index, even though it's always gonna be zero. It's, it's just safe to go by, by image index. The x and y. I can see this all down here, by the way. The x and y is just going to be whatever the x and y is, wherever I place it. The x scale, okay, this is where the tricky part comes in. So for the x scale, first you do room width divided by sprite width. So let's say the room width equals 640. And then your sprite width equals 128 in this case. So the sprite, this divided by the sprite width would be 5. So if there's x scale to 5, the sprite would be 5 times bigger than it actually is. So that way it would be um, the whole room. But we want to multiply, divide it by 10, or multiply it by whatever we have the C constant to make it the size we want. So do that, multiply by C. And then we make our next thing. Do room height, because it's for the y-axis, divided by sp sprite height. And again, multiply it by C. Now I finish out the rest of our variables. Rotation is image angle. Color is image blend. And alpha is image alpha. That's all for the, um, now this is all for the minimap. Let's go into the player. Now we're going to program an icon of the player onto the minimap. So go into the draw event. Whenever you work with the draw event, you got to make sure that the um, sprite is made. So that to know they get a little black box there, like it's supposed to be, type down draw sprite. It's not necessary to do extension this time. Just make it sprite index uh, image index and whatever the x and y values. Next. Now we're going to make a, uh, an icon for this player on the minimap. So to put down draw Sprite, we need the XT this time. Um, 
for the sprite index make it or for the sprite make SPR icon. In my case, I made the image index for the player icon the second um, sub image, so that's going to be 1 in the 0 base system, the second one. So I just realized you do not need a ext for this. Sorry. The x and y are the important part. Put down, for the x, put down obj minimap.x. And I'll just type the rest down and I'll explain it in one sec. All right, so this is just the top left corner of the minimap, and then, or uh, this is the left corner, left side of the minimap at, at objminimap.x, and then this code is how much you want to add to it. To add to it. So one thing I want to keep in mind is that this part right here, objminimap.c times width, that would be the width of the minimap because remember c is the proportion to the room. So this equals 0 0.1, so the room width is 640 or something like that. So you, the, it comes out that this ends up being the width of the um, minimap. And then from there, you want to multiply that by the proportion from the x value to the room width. So let's say that x equals 320 and the room width equals 640. So this will equal a half, so you're halfway through the room. Then you multiply that by the width, so one half. You multiply that by the width of the minimap, and it comes out halfway through the minimap, which is exactly what you want. All right. So you do some similar for the for the y. Put in y plus y divided by room height this time. Then you put times obj times height. And there you have it. Now when we play the game, um the player should show up in there, but first of course you need to make the game. Or make the room. Okay, I'm gonna set the width to two eighty by 640, which, once it's um, in there, I think is about the resolution of my recording area, so it should work perfectly. Add the minimap. Add, and add the player. Go to backgrounds. I made, I made a background for this. You don't have to. This looks a little nicer since it matches minimap. So let's make a background. Add the background like so. And then go into uh, views, enable use of views, visible room starts, and it's like make sure it's following OBJ player. Th these are fine, and let's do 400 by 400 so it follows the, the player exactly. Now we want this mini map to show up in the top left corner of the view at all times. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to the mini map, go to the step event, and put down x equals view x view and then we put down zero to show which view we were talking about so and then we put y equals view y view and then again we put zero to top, tell it which view you were talking about and in this case I want to put it a little bit off the corner so I'm going to add 10 to each one to make it be a little bit far, farther from the corner uh, all right now I'm ready to test the game out first off you see that we have the OBJ player in there, the background working, you got the map, and you got a little icon. It looks like it's roughly the same same place that OBJ player should be. And as you can see, the, the minimap is a little bit off the corner like I meant it to. You see the icon? You can see the icon? It's moving very well with the player. And it's always in the exact same placing to the room. And you can also see that the... Um, sprite of the minimap resize itself like I told it to. Let me show you a different trick, another trick. Let's do create group. Let's call it buildings. You saw that I have several building sprites here. We're going to put it to use right now. First we're going to create obj building. This is going to act as a parent to other buildings. If you don't know what um, a parent is, basically I make other objects and 
this one's the parent, and they, they'll copy what's in here. All of them have the same draw event, so they're just going to copy that. The draw event for the buildings is very similar to the draw event of the player. So I'm just going to copy this. So it's the same concept. Go into here, add event, draw event, and copy it. And uh, paste it, sorry. The only thing we need to change is this image index, because I had the image index z zero for the buildings. Alright, so now let's create a building. OBJ building one. Let's give it the parent of OBJ building and give it one of my building sprites. Now let's duplicate it. OBJ building two. Give it the yeah, give it the next building sprite. Good. Oh, let's make third one. OBJ building three, and give it another one. Keep in mind that even though there's no code here, it's copying the code from OBJ building, and you can see that set right there. Now let's go into our room, and let's create like three or so of each building. All right, and here we go. You can see all the buildings are in there. I just like hit them, and you can see they've developed all these blue X's on there, and it's pretty well aligned because you see right now I'm basically on top of the yellow plus sign, and it's right on the X with the um, mini map. So there you go. It works pretty well. So that's basically everything there is. There's one more thing I want to show you. With this method, one thing that's cool is that and the C value that I set a long time ago. If you think the mini map's too small, you can just change this to, let's say, 0.3. And then it'll show up bigger. And all the values will be recalculated to, um, uh, will be recalculated for it so it'll work because the way you programmed it. Alright then, that's all for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. This tutorial is now off the list. If you have any suggestions for these tutorials, please tell me because and I'll put them on here and get them done probably next week. We'll make videos every Saturday.